Welcome to Toy Polloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. Now recently I showed you how to make a replacement cape for a vintage 12 inch Boba Fett and today we're going to look at making the replacement Wookiee Scalps which is another common bit that is missing from a vintage Boba Fett as you can see here. Now I don't actually have a, an original uh, version of the Wookiee Scalps but Gary from the Geek Force very kindly sent me this photo of what they should look like and we're going to use this as the basis for making the replacement Wookiee Scalps today. The first thing we need to do for the wiki scalps is actually to make some beads. Now you probably could buy some beads but I couldn't find any that match so I thought I would make them just using some milliput. So I've mixed up a little bit of milliput here mixing the two together and I'm going to use this to make the four small beads and one large bead that uh, are on a set of wiki scalps. So I'm just going to pull off a small amount of uh, this milliput and roll it into a ball. We'll make the large bead first. I don't actually know the exact size but from that photo I can sort of roughly work out uh, what we're going to need. So I'm going to roll a little ball like that and then the large bead is sort of slightly pushed flat and I'm going to use a uh, cotton bud here and I've taken the cotton off one end and I'm going to use that to make a hole in the middle of this. Just push that through. As you can see there it's a nice hole. I think we might need to make that a little bit larger because this is the large bead so a few little bits of uh, uh, sort of thread have got to go through it. Something like that. So that's the large, large bead made. I'm just going to put that there to dry and I've got to make four smaller beads. Um, once these are all dry we can paint them up and make them match the original colours quite easily uh, but uh, it, I thought this was probably the best way of doing it rather than spending hours hunting around trying to find a bead that probably doesn't exist anymore. So the small bead you need slightly less of it because this is just a little round bead again with a hole in the middle so I'm hoping that the same trick will work if I just roll that on my worktop. I can then just use the cotton bud to push a hole through like so as you can see there and then I'm going to gently squeeze this down a little bit. I think by the time that is painted the correct colour that should look pretty good. So I've got, got to make four more small beads or three more actually because this is uh, one of them here uh, and then let them all dry overnight. It's now a day later and as you can see the uh, bits of milliput have uh, gone off and we've got some nice looking little beads. Now I've mounted them on this bit of wire because I'm actually going to paint them. The original uh, beads are all sort of different colours, little sort of reds and oranges and that. So I'm going to mix up some uh, paints. I've got my humbrol paints here, a few different colours. So I'm going to mix up those colours to make uh, something that matches the original image that I have here. As you can see, uh, this is uh, there's a, the larger beads are sort of a reddy brown and the smaller beads are one sort of quite an orangey and another one's a little bit of a sort of dark brown so I'm really just going to mix the colours up to match those as best as I can. Paint them uh, and then I'm going to spray them with a clear lacquer to give them a little bit of a shine uh, but the mounting them on this makes them much easier to paint because you don't actually have to sort of touch any with your fingers and you can just sort of rotate them round. So let's get those painted. So I have uh, my paints here and I have my image here which is what I'm going to work from. Uh, really there is no exact correct colour but it's just a case of sort of mixing them till I'm sort of roughly happy. So I think first off we're going to start with the larger bead uh, which is this ready one and actually the red that I have looks pretty close. I may just mix in a little bit of brown and a little bit of black there just to sort of darken it down somewhat. I think that might be a little bit closer but it really is just sort of a, a rough match uh, because these are going to be quite small so I can bring in uh, the beads here and I'm just going to carefully paint them and rotate them round as I go. And as you can see having them on this little thing means that I don't really have to touch them that much. I'm going to get a little bit of paint on me but it's uh, not enough to worry about. Now I can move on to the next colour and I think that's going to be the orange. Actually my, the orange I have again is a pretty good match. These are all um, humble colours. This is RC420 for the orange and the red that I used was RC423. So these are some quite useful colours. I also have an RC402 uh, which is the sort of brown colour and the standard 
black that I use for a lot of things, which is uh, number 33, which is a sort of matte black. Uh, but I think this orange is actually a pretty good match if I show you the image there. So uh, let's just uh, paint these ones up uh, with uh, this unmixed orange. There's no point in mixing something if it's not needed. And I've got a pair of tweezers here because these are a little bit smaller, um, just so I can hold them. And again, I can then just clean the tweezers at the end. And now we're on to a final colour, which is these last ones here at the end. You can see I've done the orange ones. There's these sort of larger sort of purpley brown beads. And then we have uh, the last bead, which is a sort of dark brown. You can just about see there. So I'm going to mix up uh, some black and some RC402 uh, uh, to make a sort of darker brown, because I don't actually have one here. But I think uh, we should be able to make a good colour just mixing those two like that. And that looks like a quite a nice sort of shade of brown. So again, I've just got to paint these last beads. I've actually, as you can see, made more beads than I need because I'm going to make a couple of these. I'm going to make a little test one first. Uh, so it's nice just to have a few more beads. Each uh, of the braids needs one large bead and two small of each of the colour. So two orange and two dark brown. Uh, but I've made a lot more just because uh, it seems worthwhile doing at the time. So let's get these ones painted as well. Once the paint had had time to dry, I then gave them a quick coat with a clear lacquer spray just to make them a little bit more glossy and give them a bit more of a sort of shiny finish. And here we have the end result. As you can see, I've now got little beads that are the matching colours to the Wookiee Scouts beads and they have a nice little sort of shiny finish. And I think these are going to do the job quite nicely. So we can now get on with making the actual sort of uh, string sort of wool part of the Wiki Scouts, which is the sort of scalp hair. And for that, we're going to be using two types of wool. Now, I've raided Mrs. Toy Ploy's uh, sort of wool stash and found these two bits of wool, which uh, look like they should be perfect. We have a black and we have a sort of ivory colour. Now, these are three ply acrylic wools, uh, and that's uh, quite important because what we've got to do is actually take these apart and uh, split them into the component sort of three threads uh, and we can then make the new scalps from that. So I've actually asked Mrs. Toy Ploy to help me with these. So let's go ahead and get these made and you can see exactly what needs to be done. First up, you'll need to cut a length of thread. Now, the actual scalps themselves uh, are two different lengths. The black scalp is 28 centimetres long and the white scalp is 25 centimetres long. So cut yourself two lengths of thread that are much longer than those because uh, when you unwind it and then also plait it again, it will get a bit shorter. Once you've got two lengths of wool, you'll need to tie a knot at the end of uh, both bits of wool and clamp them so that they can be held firmly. And what you need to do then is to unwind the thread. So split them down the middle and and turn them into the three separate threads that make up the piece of wool. Uh, this is a little bit of a fiddly job, but it can be done. And what you'll end up with then is three bits of thread that all are looking quite sort of kinked and uh, twirly just because they have been on the thread. So the next process is to straighten those. Now we use some hair straighteners and you need to pull the thread a little bit taut but not too taut. And you move the hair straighteners down the thread but not pulling. You just gently clamp it along as you go and do this sort of fairly slowly and don't pull too hard because you're liable to break the thread. But it's pretty easy to go along the thread and you'll see that it soon takes the kink out of it and you'll end up with three very nice straight threads. Now, because the wool we used wasn't particularly thick, we've actually split down two lengths of wool into the three sections. And we're going to use both of those to plait to make one new uh, Wookiee scalp. So when you come to plait this, you lay the two bits of unwound thread on top of each other and make sure you're using two separate pieces of the thread to do the plaiting. And you plait this in the normal way you would. As you can see, Mrs. Toy Ploy is very quick at doing this. And she managed to do a 30 centimetre length of plaiting in really not much time. And once you're done, you end up with something that does look remarkably like the original Wookiee Scalps. Doing the plaiting is probably the hardest part of this process for me, just because I'm not very good at doing it. So uh, as you can see, Mrs. Toy Ploy has done a really nice job here. This is the uh, white plait that she did for me, and it looks uh, really quite neat. Uh, and then here is the black one. Now, as I said, you do need quite a lot of this. So uh, the quicker you are at the plaiting, uh, the better it is. 
This uh, black piece here is over 30 centimetres long and we actually only need about 28 centimetres for it uh, but uh, Mrs Hoblow was so quick she just carried on going and the white one is a little bit shorter but that is still uh, long enough. So now we have to go about threading the beads on and I have a little bit of uh, wire here which I find the easiest way to do this threading. At the moment uh, these have knots at both ends to stop them un sort of raveling and we're going to have to cut off one of the knots uh, because we need to thread these on. I probably should have put the beads on beforehand but uh, as this is all being filmed uh, sort of it uh, didn't cross my mind but that's all right we can work around that. So I have here a piece of wire and we're going to use this to thread uh, the beads onto uh, the sort of plaited bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop the plait over the wire. Now the white uh, bit of wiki scalp uses the darker small bead so I'm just going to use the wire here to thread through the bead as you can see just like that. And it should fit over both sections of the bead and the knots should hold it in place at the other end. And I'm going to thread the other darker bead through. I think this has a slightly smaller hole by the look of it so it's going to be a little bit uh, harder to pull through. Oh no, there we go. That's done. Now we can get rid of the wire because that really is just for threading uh, this uh, on. For the white scalp you actually need 19 centimetres of uh, plaiting. So I'm just going to measure this here because I'm sure I've got way over that. So as you can see uh, we've got 26 centimetres worth of plaiting. So if I just uh, pull this down I'm going to do it slightly too long which means we need a knot about there. I'm just going to cut off this little knot that uh, Mrs Toyboy did at the end because then I can pull this fully through like so and we see we have two beads on there and now I can measure this properly and uh, we'll just get that to that's 15 and then that's about another four there so I'm just going to tie a knot here So, and that knot should be big enough to stop the bead coming off the end. We'll just check that in case I need to put a, an extra knot on. No, that knot looks good. So we now have a bit of thread with two beads on the end. And at the end of the uh, little uh, sort of wookie scalps, you need a little bit of extra. Uh, but that varies depending on which uh, sort of pictures I've seen of the wookie scalp. So I'm going to leave a fairly long piece on this one. Just cut that off. And then I also want to un unplat that just so it looks like some uh, sort of loose hair so I'm just going to use that bit of wire there there you go just like that and we'll leave that loose so there we have the first the white wookie scout made we can go on to making the black one and it's the same process for the black one this one actually needs to be 23 centimeters between the two knots and again you want a nice sort of end with some little straggly bits this is the one end that I think is pretty good so I'm just going to chop that off a little bit shorter to start with so we class that as one sort of good end and again we need to thread the beads on so again a bit of wire here I'm just going to hook the plait through the wire and then take the two beads that I've made put those on one at a time and then we can pull the plait through like that and we'll take the wire off again. Now there is another knot here that Mrs Toy Ploy tied just to hold everything together so if I just cut that off it won't unravel that quickly. We can pull that one through so we've now got two beads on the wire sorry on the thread and this one as I said needs to be 23 centimeters long so again I've got a ruler here so that's 15 and there we go that is about 23 so that's quite a long one so I'll just tie a knot here like so and I will cut off the excess uh, plait that we have again and again just going to get, grab a little bit of wire just so that I can unravel the uh, plait there just so that we've got sort of loose bits of uh, wookie hair I suppose is what it's supposed to be there you go like that 
and then we can move the bead to the other end. So there we have the other one. And now we just have to attach these two together. And this is where the final bead comes into play. So we're going to again use the little bit of wire that I have here. I'm going to hook that over the two uh, scalps. I'm going to just put those together. Take the bead. Now this is the larger bead that I made. We can thread that on and hopefully there should be a big enough hole in the middle of this that we can thread this through. Now we only need to thread this through a little way because um, it's this bead that holds it onto Boba Fett's shoulder. So you just want to sort of thread it through a little bit like that. And there we have some replacement Wookiee scalp. So let's get this onto Boba Fett and we'll see what it looks like. And so here are the finished Wookiee Scouts. As you can see, they actually look really nice. They're a pretty close match to the original uh, Wookiee Scouts that you would have got with this toy. Obviously, you could go out and buy some beads, but for the purposes of this video, I thought it'd be nice to show you how to make some. And as you can see, these match pretty nicely. And by the time these are all in place, you would hardly know that they'd been made out of Milliput, but uh, they really do do the job. Uh, but it may be easier for you to go and source some beads if you don't want to go to the effort of making them. But for me, it was actually more fun to uh, make them. Overall, this isn't one of the easiest things I've ever made just because of the plaiting and the amount of little bits that you have to do to make them but I think it really is worth doing it does add a lot to the original vintage Boba Fett dolls that I have here and if you're not very good at plaiting then do ask someone else to do it as you can see Mrs Toyploy managed to do these in a record time it would have taken me hours and hours to plait such large lengths of uh, wool but she did it in just a few minutes so uh, try and get someone else to do it who is an expert at plaiting if you can. If you found this video interesting and would like to help out Toyploy then please check out my Patreon page and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Poloi. Subscribe for more great videos.